This is the strangest one I have ever encountered. iPhone 11 came in with customer complaining of battery issues. Battery was visibly swollen, pushing the screen out of the housing. Phone showed service under battery health. I quoted a battery replacement and of course the customer had no money. Being a sucker that I am, I offered a good used at a discount. This sounds very familiar. I pulled a used battery from a known good housing and installed it. As soon as I plugged it in, I got a puff of smoke from the top of the board, rear camera connector area. I then plugged the original battery back in and into an amp meter. It's now drawing a consistent zero one. I have replayed it a thousand times, but for the life of me, cannot come up with anything I did wrong or should have done different other than no good deed goes unpunished. Isn't that the truth? Well, I have this here, right here, and we're gonna have a look at it and see exactly what's going on. Now, this shop did not send me the entire phone. They sent, you know, just the logic board for the phone. So starting down here at the battery connector area, it definitely has the look of a board that has had somebody like pulling their hair out, trying to figure out what in the world went wrong. These things have a way of getting shoved back inside the plastic and you know, this won't cause a situation where it doesn't power on, but it does cause a problem with battery data. Um, what am I even doing here? Um, okay, so we've got some flaky stuff down in the connector. I'm not really sure what that's all about. Looking over here at the DocFlex FPC, it has the look of a connector that's had something like stabbed or like maybe jabbed down in it a little bit. The pins have a look of you know, they have been scraped on, so somebody's like taking a blade or something and just clean this out. Uh, so far, none of this will cause any problems. Uh, this connector looks like it should be completely functional. I don't like leaving these little bits of plastic shoved down in here like this. You know, this is from like, you know, it's been smooshed, but you know, that again, that's not going to cause a problem. This guy said to put off a puff of smoke, right? Like near the camera connector. So let's just zip right on down to the other end of the board and let's see what went wrong, shall we? Uh, well then, we have what appears to be complete total carnage. This is absolutely positively, beyond a shadow of a doubt, not supposed to be burnt right here. So right away, one might be really quick to blame the, the technician and say, what in the world did you burn here? However, if you are somebody that works on this sort of thing for a living or have done this a time or two or three or 10, you may already be realizing something is off about this board. This is completely disgusting. Look what we have here. The board has liquid damage all along this connector. And also, you know, on this side of the connector too, if we start peeling back this sticker and looking under it, we've got some liquid damage under there. So then that really bears the question, here's a technician who made the mistake of trying to do somebody a favor. And as he laid his hands on their device, it let out a puff of smoke and then it quit working. So the question is, did this guy actually cause the damage or is this something that stems from pre-existing damage? From the looks of this, I'm gonna say this thing was just begging to fail, but I don't know exactly what that big old burnt black spot is just yet. So then, back under the microscope, I'm going to go ahead and peel this sticker here off of here. Now, right off the bat, I am very much concerned about any additional liquid damage because this board has absolutely, positively, beyond a shadow of a doubt, been liquid damaged. Look here, we got liquid damage up here around this connector here as well. Now, so far, this damage looks like it you know, it's pretty well just isolated to the connectors here on top. Who knows exactly how deep that liquid damage has gotten? You know, is it between the logic board sections? Uh, what's it look like around these connectors right here? Let's just see. Uh, 
Okay, so that part of the board actually looks pretty good. I am just going to go ahead and touch this up and clean this up some. I'm pretty strict about not fixing boards for the sake of being used that have been liquid damaged. Let me see what I can do with it, shall we? First, I'm going to try just some straight alcohol here. And see how that will do. You never know what it is that's on the board. If it is something that I can dissolve with alcohol, this will actually work quite well. Uh, this does not always work. So far, this, hmm, this actually looks pretty promising. I'm still not exactly clear as to what it is that blew off smoke. Uh, we should find that out here pretty soon. We like it when things smoke on this channel, don't we? At least that's what the analytics data says anyways. Now I'm trying also to like not make a big mess. Um, I don't want to flood a bunch of liquid between the logic board sections because, uh, you know, hopefully that under there is okay. We're not trying to do an absolute spotless job on this just yet because the situation is going to arise here where this repair shop's customer they are under the impression, most likely, that the technician that worked on their phone is responsible for this. But right here and now, I'm showing you all that this is a liquid damage board and the technician that dug in and tried to help this person with their battery issue, he didn't do this. This guy's like, he's most likely gonna be totally innocent, but we still don't know what smoked, you know, Maybe this is like liquid damaged and it just looks like absolute, complete, total carnage. But also this guy accidentally shorted it. So let's, let's just see. Mmm, look here, we left some hair behind. Mm -hmm. Let's just uh, go ahead and get that out of the way. We don't want any hairy connectors now, do we? All right, now this is not near enough to like just hook the juice to this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and continue cleaning this up more. The customer says the phone blew out a puff of smoke. How about that? Well, I think it's pretty safe to say that the smoke came from this area right here. Now, I do have to wonder if this board looks like this, what did the rest of the housing look like? You know, I'm, I'm guessing that the screen was maybe broken or something right here where the liquid came through. I also have to wonder why this shop didn't send the entire device, why they sent just the board. Sometimes I have shops that do that because they don't want me to see what the rest of the phone looked like. So the question I have right now is the issue that caused smoke to barrel out of it, something that was shorted inside the housing, like, you know, this looks like it's next to a camera connector. Was there a short with one of the cameras or something that caused this? So having a look at the board view here, I'm going to have to go with no. The two components that I scrubbed off the board, that is C9030 and C9031. These are VDD main caps. They're not like filters or anything that would have smoked from having a short out here at the connector. Let's just dig down in here a little bit with the razor blade. And I'm going to see if I can tell where the carbon ends and the board begins. Now, it's obvious that this connector actually got hot right here. You can see that it's all crinkled. Now, I do apologize. I have got the brightness all the way up. This is just all of the brightness I can get. And we're zoomed in far enough to where it's just, it's not quite enough. So I'm just going to kind of dig around here. This black charry stuff I'm flaking off of here, it's conductive. That alone is enough to cause smoke and fire. So we do want to get rid of that. And I suspect that this board has been, you know, it's going to be brittle, like way down in there deep. These boards, the, the substrate that they're made out of, once you get a burn like this, for whatever reason, the fiberglass or whatever these boards are made out of, it just becomes this like black, charry dust that just flakes away endlessly. And if you keep it this and you continue to clean the char away, before you know it, you wind up with a huge gaping hole in the board. So I think the longer we dig at this, 
the deeper our hole is going to get. And I don't exactly know what I'm looking at here, but I will start getting into some, some traces. So let's slop some more alcohol on this, shall we? And there we go. We can see that we have... And by we, I mean me. I have pretty well stripped away the top part of the board there. We have some ground plane exposed underneath. And then also uh, some underlying goodies. You know, here we've got some Tracy stuff that has been exposed. So I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. On that side, on this side, we're okay with this. We don't have anything major sh uh, shorted out. Okay, so with that little bit of scraping around and stuff and a little bit of cleaning, I have most likely cleared the area of the board that was burning and catching on fire on this guy. So I think the only reasonable thing to do at this point in time is to just go ahead and hook it up and see what happens whenever I hook power to it. Okie dokie, let's go ahead and stuff this thing right on into a housing, shall we? I'm not too concerned about full functionality here, fellers. Mainly, my... Are you really focusing on my hands? Okay. My main concern here is... Uh, I just, I want to know if I can send this back working. This is not a repair that I'm going to be able to charge for. I will need to get with the customer and explain to them exactly what the deal is with this phone. They are under the impression that they caused this, but they actually didn't. I'm going to hook our power supply up here. And right away, we want to know if this thing smokes and burns, right? Now, the power supply, it's not turned on yet, so let's get ready. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and turn the power supply on. We are drawing an instant 200 milliamps of current. Now, 200 milliamps of current... That is quite a bit for a board that doesn't have anything hooked to it. Um, I did hook my dock flex to it, but my dock flex, I know this is a known, I mean, this is a working dock flex. So this board all by itself, it has something shorted. So honestly, I really don't think this technician had anything to do with this other than he touched it. I mean, that, that's it. This board was ready to fail. He touched it and it died. So how about that 200 milliamp load? What do you want to bet me that that load is coming from right here? Hmm? 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 Bet you that's it. So I'm going to get some alcohol on a Q-tip. I know everybody's going, Jason, use the thermal camera, thermal camera. So I'm going to use some alcohol on a Q-tip. I'm just going to add a little drop of alcohol here. And just as it wets the board, I'm going to turn the supply on. Here we go. One, two, three. Where's our heat coming from, fellers? Still drawing 200 milli big ones. That's almost a full watt of power. Come on. Oh, it's down in there. Way down in there. All right. So we're not getting enough heat here to cause, like, boiling but if you look deep in the hole, and I'm going to turn the power on in one, two, three, power. See that? We get just the slightest, slightest, slightest little bit of bubbly. So let's dry the hole a little bit because there's just too much alcohol there. And let's see. Boy, it's really, and I mean really hard to tell what part of that charcoal mess this is coming from. So I'm going to slip a new blade on. And before, whenever I said we didn't want to keep digging, well, now I take that all back. We're actually going to go ahead and keep digging. And I'm just trying to figure out where our short is. This black stuff that I'm flaking off of here, this is most likely our conductor. Uh, this stuff is conductive. Now, there's no mention of data on this. 
Uh, this is strictly just a, you worked on my iPhone 11 and now it doesn't turn on no more type situation. But I don't know, maybe, maybe there is data here. Probably, there's always data. Alright, we're getting way down in there now. Oh yeah, you can see this hole that's going on like right here between the ground plane. Right down in there, I mean, that's probably where it's at. And I just, I know this looks really dark on your screen. And I think the only way I can capture that is, you know, I've got to upgrade some hardware here. But just to give you an idea of exactly how big this is, this is the sharpest toothpick that money can buy. And then looking back at this board at our gaping hole, this is what that toothpick looks like on top of it. So I believe our short is coming from uh, essentially carbon that has made its way between uh, traces right here on the logic board. So I've got that scraped back some. All right, I'm gonna turn the power on again and see if the short is gone. Actually, the short's a little bigger now. That's nice. All right, I'm going to continue to dig around here just a little bit more. I have confirmed now that the short is down inside of this hole. Boy, there is just char. And it just keeps going for miles. Like, this char, it just keeps going and going and going. Ho, 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 ho. I just want the short to go away enough to, for this board to power on. Boy, I just have uh, absolutely no luck getting to that short. Let's try to get the pin on this connector peeled away from it here. Because that might actually be where it's at. Let's try it like that. Uh, no, still 200 milliamp load. Hey, there it is. That via right here. This moving. This is probably going to be... Oh my God the powered bit. So I'm really not sure if that was a great idea, but this is now no longer part of the logic board. And I believe that was the section of it. You know, that's the part that was under power. And there you have it. Look at the size of this carnage. You have what starts with a gaping hole on top and funnels down into a slightly smaller hole. That must go all the way through the board, right? Let's turn the power on. And now let's see if our short is gone, shall we? We are getting 400 milliamps. I dug a hole all the way through this board. Let's get some alcohol on here. And we'll turn the power on. Oh yeah, that's definitely where the short is, fellers. Well. I think this is about the point in time where I'm gonna stop. To be completely honest, let's see what we get on the power supply. 300 milliamps, and you can see just each time I turn it on, like, watch the shade of this hole change. It's gonna go on, off, on, off, on, off. Okay, let's put some alcohol on it. This is not going to work with a dry hole. So now, power supply on, off, on, off, on. Now I do wonder, like, if I just sit here and leave the power hooked up, if this short's eventually just gonna, you know, burn itself in half. But 
I think that's what's already happened with this board. It has sat for a good amount of time with power hooked up. The entirety of that time, it's been drawing a couple hundred milliamps of power. And that whole entire time, it's just been gradually turning the substrate of this, this logic board into charcoal. So I think I should turn the power supply off. Oh yeah, and just from those couple of seconds just now, where I'm just sitting here yakking with the power turned on, look down inside of this hole. We have got a whole new area of coal over here. And it's just sort of like turning this board into charcoal. That is so bad. All right, one more, I mean, just one more feeble attempt to clear this short. And uh, I'm going to have to move on from this one because this is not one that I get to bill for. You know, I'm not going to charge for this. I was hoping that I could send it back at least able to turn on so that they can say, I've got it back up to a point where it's able to turn on. But, you know, there's other problems, but I, I don't think that's going to happen here. This is carnage. I mean, a lot of you have heard me talk about carnage on this channel quite a bit. And whenever you see a hole that big going down into a multi-layer board, that is absolute, complete total carnage. What happens when we turn the power on? Same exact thing. All right, guys, that is going to be an end to this one. I need to contact this customer and let him know exactly what's going on here. This is a guy, you know, he thinks he's under the impression that he caused this, but I mean, I'm going to show him this video. He absolutely did not cause this. This is a board that I could most likely get up and running for the purpose of accessing data. In fact, it might even start up and run the way it is now. I really didn't try. That would be... Uh, that would be a bad idea. Um, but anyways, if I could get it to start and be able to make a backup, this is definitely not a board that I would want to send back guaranteed as repaired. So anyways, if you all like this type of thing, I have a video that I recorded a little while ago that I never finished. It is an iPhone 11 Pro that had a very, very similar in injury. This thing actually had a short right next to the display connector. A large part of the PCB was charcoaled and I was faced with needing to get the data out of the board. So I wound up excavating the PCB way back and running some jumpers and getting everything that I needed reconnected, slapped a new connector on top of there and got the data. There's actually quite a bit more to that one. So if you like this type of thing, stay tuned. That is a repair video that I'm going to post really soon. And um, that's it for this one, everybody. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Have a good day.